This is the Greg Bedard Patriots Podcast with Nick Cavins. Hey everybody, welcome into another edition of the Greg Bedard Patriots Podcast brought to you by Athletic Greens that has 75 nutritional supplements all in one tasty drink. So a lot going on. Today is Monday. Uh, Sorry you didn't get a uh, a pod on Saturday. I taped one, but uh, when we went back and listened to it, it sounded like um, I was Max Hedrum. Um, It really distorted Max Hedrum, for those of you uh, from the 80s. And uh, so we had to scrap it, and unfortunately I couldn't do it. So just to recap, before we get to Monday's practice, I just want to touch on and sort of sets the stage for Monday. I want to touch on Saturday's practice, uh, which, you know, I'm sure you've heard by now that it was not good for the offense. Um, You know, it was the, unfortunately it was the first weekend practice for Saturday practice. That's normally a place is packed. People are going nuts. Everyone's cheering every single play because, you know, they're in a good mood, but it was pretty silent. Most of practice. Why? Because the offense was, uh, not good at all. You know, yes, there were a few plays here and there, but uh, including both seven on sevens and 11 on 11s, uh, Mac Jones and Bailey Zappi combined to go 19 of 42. Jones had a second, second interception in as many days. Um, the offense lost their final goal line reps, both of them. Um, of the incompletions, there were seven pass breakups, six sacks, Drops by Hunter Henry, Pierre Strong, Devin Asiasi, uh, not good. Um, you know, when you go out to a training camp practice, pretty much the thing you want to see if you're looking for good offense is you don't want to see the ball hit the ground. Uh, you want it to be crisp, everybody catching the ball, good throws. Uh, but that was not the case. The ball was all over the place on the ground. It was sloppy. It was not good. Uh, but there was a big caveat with that. And, um, and and I think it deserves mention that, look, Saturday's practice was the fourth consecutive practice. They weren't in pads where they're working on red zone stuff. Um, day one was a heavy install day on that. And then they sort of added a little bit more here and there. So by the time you got to Saturday, it was the fourth day of red zone stuff, red zone routes, whatever. And in that confined amount of space, the end zone plus 5, 10, 15 yards, uh, not a lot of real estate when you have 22 players on the field. And also, there's only so many routes that you can run. And so by the time you get to the fourth day, the defense has seen everything. And, uh, you know, that the offense struggled. And there could have been I – heard, I, I heard somebody else mention this, and this is, um, you know, certainly viable that – uh, they were working a little bit more on scramble stuff because the the quarterbacks were running all over the place. Mac Jones wasn't wearing his knee brace. Maybe he knew that was going to be a point of emphasis. I think I heard Bob Sosi say uh, something along these lines. So good job, Bob. I did not notice that. Um, but I just, um, you know, it is what it is. I mean, I, I'm not overreacting to that. Of course, somebody on Twitter, because I keep saying, don't overreact. He's like, nobody's overreacting. It's training camp. Yes. There are people who overreact to training camp. Yes, you might not, but there are people who do it. Um, So that was Saturday. They had a day off on Sunday. They come out on Monday, first day in pads, first day of real camp. Here we go. The offense is going to answer right back. And um, in many ways, this practice could have been worse or could have been worse than Saturday's practice. Um, I put it this way, and and I've already heard Felger Mass. Of course, they're running wild with it. Um, but the way I termed it, first of all, let's set the stage. Because there are pads on, uh, usually a very heavy emphasis on the run game. You know, you got to get guys ready. You know, get their body up to speed. Um, you know, hey, you know, blocking, pads are on. Uh, a little bit of hitting, a little bit of thudding, just trying to get guys. It was a little bit shorter of a practice than normal, probably just because they didn't want to do it, overdo it the first day in pads. So I understand. Uh, so heavy emphasis on the run game. We had talked about the first four practices. If you're looking for the Kyle Shanahan scheme, wasn't there. It was there today. 
So the first clue for me was when the Patriots broke off into basically a point of attack run blocking drill where you would have, you know, usually um, an offensive lineman, uh, a running back would get a ball and there would either be a tight end or, you know, somebody else, another offensive lineman who basically there would be two blocks at the point. The running back would read the blocks and the offensive line is trying to do their job while off the guys, the defenders, defenders are trying to defeat the block, you know, two gap and get off. Um, the way the Patriots ran it in this practice, it was, it was an outside zone running drill. I had not, the Patriots have not run this version of this uh, run game point of attack drill. In my opinion, I could be wrong. Um, but I haven't seen it done this way. And to me, it was, that was the first clue that here we go outside zone. So they do that drill. And, um, <clears throat> you know, while we're here on that, uh, so basically you would get some, you know, one-on-ones. And I thought that, you know, I saw Cole Strange, the first round pick left guard. He's going to start from day one. Uh, this was really his first rep of training camp in pads against another NFL defender. It was Christian Barmore. And I thought Cole Strange did a really nice job on that first snap. Um, you know, got an angle, kept Barmore out of it. Again, Barmore is not the the greatest run defender in the world. For those of you wanting Christian Barmore to all of a sudden be a no doubt starter, three down guy with the Patriots in his second season, so far we have seen no clues of that. He is decidedly on the second team when it comes to uh, base defense. So Cole Strange handles him. Then his uh, final rep, he goes up against Anthony Jennings, who I will say has been one of the surprises of camp to this point. He he has shown up all the time, pass rushing in this drill, the run defense. Uh, you know, he basically took Cole Strange and had his way with him, and that led to um, you know Belichick coaching Cole Strange up. Um, that would be uh, we would see a lot of that um, now. Let's go back to where we were in practice. They were working on outside zone runs. So now they come to 11 on 11s. They're obviously working on outside zone runs and sort of short passing game off that like boots. A lot of outside zone runs um, and, you know, boots. This is Kyle Shanahan's bread and butter first and second downs. And I have to tell you, and I'm not prone to hyperbole. I, tell, I think you guys know that I tell you my honest opinion. And I have been covering NFL training camps. Uh, this is 2022, uh, you know, my early since 2001. So we're talking 20 years that I've been covering NFL camps that range from the Miami Dolphins to the Green Bay Packers to traveling around and seeing NFL training camps as an NFL reporter and also the, the, the Patriots when I was covering the globe and now back on the Patriots. So I've seen my fair share of good, bad, and ugly training camp practices. Um, I have to tell you, this session that they ran, and there were one, two, three, there were 12 plays. Uh, it was one of the worst offensive periods I've ever seen at any camp. Um, it was almost a complete disaster from soup to nuts. Uh, it started with Isaiah Wynn jumping off sides, the next play, Mac Jones threw an interception to trying to go to Tyquan Thornton, who rookie he probably ran the wrong route. Not even close. Um, Terrence Mitchell steps in front of it, picks it off. So that that's now three consecutive practices that Mac Jones has, has thrown interceptions. Uh, second play, um, Devon Godchow owns David Andrews, run stuff. Um, Ramondre Stevenson goes outside zone left. A two-yard run. Uh, now in comes Bailey Zappi and the second team offense. Uh, Ramondre Stevenson stuffed by Anthony Jenks. Next play, you know, decent left end outside zone run. You know, positive play, probably five or six yards. So good run. Uh, and then Bailey Zappi off a of play action overthrows Christian Wilkerson by a good margin. Not even close. So in comes for the final three plays, in comes Mac Jones in the first team offense. On the field, on defense, is the third team defense. All guys you have never heard of. 
um, including, you know, another surprise, LeBrian Ray, uh, defensive lineman. Keep an eye on him. Could be the next Adam Butler. Uh, so Mac Jones, first play against the third team defense. Here we go. Get some confidence. Uh, run stuff. And that was that it was Cole Strange got blown up by LeBron Ray. Uh, next play uh, for no gain. Final play uh, stuffed uh, by Harvey Lange. Um So that was the sum total of that session. It was, um, yeah, I think I termed it on Twitter, an abject disaster. And it was. And, you know, look. You're putting in a new scheme. It's you're not going to be the 1985 or 1984 San Francisco 49ers overnight running the outside zone. It's just not going to happen. You're not going to be the Denver Broncos of the 90s with Mike Shanahan. Uh, not going to happen. So uh, good news is they have nowhere to go with up. But I got to tell you, it was ugly. It were the only thing that it reminded me of, and I'm sure people are going to cringe at this, but I'm sorry. This is course i did cover the packers and the, the patriots pretty good offenses so i don't have a whole lot of bad offensive play to judge off of but to me it reminded me of cam cameron's first practices with the miami dolphins that's how bad it was and um i mean that sincerely uh so that's the first thing that you need to know the second thing i will get to right after i tell you about athletic greens uh I literally use this every day, every morning. I started taking AG1 because I, I was sick of like buying like all these different vitamins and pills and, you know, should I eat this? Should I eat that? What should I drink? But it's, it's, it's all there. It's all there. With one delicious scoop of AG1, you're absorbing 75 high quality vitamins, minerals, whole food sourced ingredients, probiotics, and adaptogens to help you start your day right. The special, special blend of ingredients supports your gut health, your nervous system, your immune system, your energy, recovery, focus, and aging, all those things. Uh, I love it. I take it first thing in the morning. I notice that I'm you know, more focused. I have energy. Uh, my digestion's working really well. I also love how with you know, my, my new diet and things like that, contains less than one gram of sugar, no GMOs, no nasty chemicals or artificial anything while still tasting good. It does. It tastes a little minty. You think green juice, it's going to be kind of gross. This is not. It's refreshing, actually. Right now is the time to reclaim your health and arm your immune system with convenient daily nutrition. It's just one scoop and a cup of water every day. That's it. No need for a million different pills and supplements to look out for your health. To make it easy, Athletic Greens is going to give you a free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. I just went on vacation, stuck the travel packs in my bag, get some water, boom, done, taken care of. All you have to do is visit athleticgreens.com slash Bedard. Again, that is athleticgreens.com slash Bedard. I've already heard from multiple podcast listeners who have already dialed it up. They're sending me pictures of your stuff. Do that too. Send it to me on Twitter at Greg A. Bedard. Show me your picture with the athletic green stuff. Get in on Give it a try. Just trust me. Give it a try and you'll like it. Take ownership over your health and pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance. Okay. So what else from today's practice? Let's talk about Cole Strange. First round pick, uh, I've told you guys that I, um, I've i been interested to see how he would look in pads because, you know, he, he does – what are the what are the measurements that the Patriots have him as? They have him as Cole Strange, 6'5", 305. He is tall, 305. Might be a little bit generous. Um you know, you'd rather a 6'5 guy, you know, you'd probably rather see him like 325, 330. Um, that's been one of my worries. Like, how is he going to anchor? He's a little bit light in, uh, as Nick Cattles would put it, the padunkadunk. Um, but he's just a rookie. I mean, you know, his his body today is not going to be the same when he's year five and probably being an all pro and stuff like that. But, you know, plugging him in there, how's he going to do against... NFL defensive tackles and the Patriots have some of those Lawrence guy, you know, um, Christian Barmore, Devon Godchow, blah, blah, blah. 
So, uh, so we watched him very closely. Like I said, his first run blocking rep against Christian Barmore was good. Then it kind of went downhill. Jelani Tavai, who's a linebacker, stood him up. Uh, that got him some coaching from Bill Belichick. Belichick was basically like, you know, telling him like, you know, he, Belichick leaned forward like this. Like he, he likes to lead with his head a lot. Like he likes to be really aggressive. You know, that's fine if you make contact, but these, these guys are pros. Like they, they see you coming like that. They'll just give way and now you're off balance and now they can do whatever they want with you. And that, that was one of the concerns about Cole Strange coming out is that he can sometimes be, especially in the run game, too aggressive trying to block. And you see this with a lot of young um, linemen. They try to impose their will on people and they just get ahead of their skis. Um, then Jennings pushed Strange down to the turf. This is in the run blocking. Um, in, in one-on-one pass rushing drills, he came up against Barmore. Good luck, buddy. Um, he might just be a second year guy, but he's a damn good interior rusher. Barmore basically took the rookie and walked him straight back. Um, his second and final rep of one on ones uh, was against Henry Anderson. And an old pro like Henry Anderson kind of went outside, then went inside. And Cole Strange totally hooked him and, and held him. Uh, I also noticed a few more holds in some of the team stuff. Um, that's another not a red flag, but a concern of Cole Strange that he can get grabby. So, um, you know, not exactly the best start for him. It was good to see Jabril Peppers, Jonathan Jones, and Miles Bryant all back on the field. Um, we did get our first one-on-ones in practice, and uh, which you guys know I love. Get on the binoculars. It's it's hard to keep track of it correctly, and some of my numbers might not be right. Uh, but as far as offensive line, I had Arlington Hambright. I'm sure you guys all know who that is as 2-0 uh, on offense. Justin Huron was 2-0-1. I thought he looked really good today. Uh, Michael Wenu and Cody, Cody Rusi, the UDFA, uh, and Drew Desjardins, the CFL guy, all 3-0, and oh, or excuse me, 1-0 oh each. Um, Cole Strange was the only 0-2 oh Um Offensive lineman, the only other one to lose all of his reps was Bill Murray, the conter- the converted defensive tackle. Of course, Cole Strange is going up against Christian Barmore and Henry Anderson. You know, it's not like it's Scrubville or anything like that. Uh, as far as the defense, Mac Wilson all of a sudden was a very surprise. It was surprise entry into the edge guys. I didn't know he really does that, but he came out and he beat Yadi Kajus uh, decisively. Um, I thought Godchow looked really good. Uh, Barmore went one and one. Um, and what else? Uh, yes, here Durant pummeled uh, Ronnie Perkins, who's much smaller than him. Um, Judon and Wynn fought to a draw to start the drill, and Brown gave up zero ground to Judon later. None of the young edge guys really popped for me. You know, you can read my four up and two down on bostonsportsjournal.com, um, a little tease there. But I will say that I thought Tyquan Thornton had a good day, had a couple of congested, uh, contested catches against Jawan Williams, who isn't exactly Deion Sanders. But, you know, hey, tough physical matchup for the, you know, skinny rookie. And, uh, you know, he did a good job today. Uh, I did not think that David Andrews uh, had a great day. I, If you asked me, I don't know this for a fact, but I, it, the way he's looked today, I don't know. I, I, would, I would reason to guess that David Andrews is not a huge fan of what they're doing in the run game and shaking, uh, changing the blocking. I don't know that. Um, a play of the day for me, along with everybody, because there weren't many good ones, was uh, Devontae Parker did a double move, burned Malcolm Butler, and Mac Jones hit him uh, for a touchdown. Pretty play leads to some concerns about Malcolm Butler, who's awesome in the red zone. Has two who had two pass breakups uh, and was good in the red zone last week. You wonder can he do that uh, from twenties to twenties um, in the game? I think that's a concern, and uh, we'll need to see how that evolves. Um, 
So I think that's it for today. Um, thanks for listening. Really appreciate it. Make sure you guys check out athleticgreens.com slash Bedard. Go over there, check it out. Trust me, the reviews are legit. It's all legit. I take it. It's great. We will see you tomorrow.